Welcome to this third tutorial in the ongoing series of videos looking at the Clint Interactive software. Today in tutorial 3 we're going to build on what we've done in tutorials 1 and 2 by looking at interactions. So interactions are one of the more advanced functions in Clint and they let you do some interesting functionality like rollovers which will really add to the possibilities of what you can achieve with your Clint project. Okay so I'm going to open the project I've been working on in the previous two tutorials click on the edit button here to open it up and it should open up our storyboard and we should be able to see exactly what we've worked on so far so we've got our title screen, our intro video, our instructions we can see our transitions or our links here and here so what we're going to do today is we're going to create another menu screen that comes after our title screen and this menu screen is going to have three options on it, so the viewer of my documentary will be able to choose three different paths to go down to view the content. So the first thing I need to do is import a background video that will loop in the background of my menu. So I'm going to go down to my finder here and I'm going to find my titles mp4 here. If I hit my spacebar just to preview it, be able to see we've got these shots. Um, of a van driving around the streets. So this is just going to work as a background video basically. Okay, I'm going to drag this directly onto my storyboard to create a new sequence with it. So I'm going to drag and drop and then let go. And there we have our new sequence. I'm going to select it and I'm going to change the name of it from titles to meet the freegans. So this sequence is all about introducing the viewers of my documentary to the three characters that are going to feature in it. Okay, so once you've changed the title, I'm going to double click. Okay, so before we start building this menu, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up this background video. So there's a couple of things I want to do to this video to make my text stand out and to make it last a bit longer than it currently does. So at the moment, this background video is just over one minute long. The first thing I'm going to want to do is loop that and make it longer. So let's take a look at how that works in Clint. If I click on the video in my timeline editor down here and go to my video properties on the right hand side, you can see there's a loop option here. So if I click on loop and then try and extend my video, you should be able to see that I can't actually make it any longer. The sequence is not letting me because the sequence is just as long as my video is. And even if I try and drag this end cursor out, my sequence, it doesn't let me. And that's because we have this ticked over here. Synchronize the sequence with this media. This is saying that my sequence will only be as long as the media in it. If I untick that, and you can either drag the end cursor out here or you can actually click on this blank space and you can change the duration of your sequence here so I'm going to make my sequence don't always have to be exact but I want to make it five minutes long and you should be able to see my end cursor now jumps and what I can do is I can drag my background video all the way along to the five minute mark so it's now five minutes in duration Okay, next I'm going to adjust how this video looks and I'm also going to adjust the volume of it. So I'm going to adjust the volume down to 20. Again, this video is not going to be the main focus of my menu, so what I want to do is adjust that volume, take it down, so it doesn't become too distracting. Also, to make my video a little less distracting, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my styles menu here and I'm going to take the opacity right down. I'm going to take the opacity down to about 20. That looks really dark here, but you'll still be able to see when I preview it that this video is visible. Okay, let's get back into my general tab quickly. I'm going to make sure I've got my fit to window option ticked. This should be ticked by default, but sometimes it does become unticked. So I'm just going to make sure that is ticked. Now what I want to do is add a title to this screen. So this is my Meet the Freegans menu, so I'm going to grab my Title 1, drag it onto the screen, double click in that text box and I'm going to call this Meet the Freegans. And again, I'm going to style this just like all the other text I've added to my project so far. So I'm going to go for that Latto font once again, 
I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to use that same yellow that I've been using throughout my project. I'm also going to center a line because I want it to be in the middle of the screen. And then let's click OK. So there's our text. As usual, with everything we put into our Clint project, we need to think about our responsive settings. So let's go over to our responsive settings here on the right. I'm going to untick default size and position. I'm going to make it a proportional size object. I want it to change size when the screen changes size. And I'm going to untick the boxes around that diagram of the screen. I want this to be center aligned, so I'm going to make sure my center X property is set to zero. My center Y can be whatever I want as long as it sits where I want it to sit on the screen. So I'm going to go for, let's try minus 150 and see how that looks. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit higher, minus 170. Okay, that'll do for now. Next, I want to add a piece of text that kind of explains what the menu does. So I'm going to go into my text menu on the left hand side and I'm going to add the paragraph text. And we should be able to see again, we've got our text box here, double click to edit. So I've got a piece of text prepared for this already if I go into my Google Drive account. And here we have our Meet the Freegans text. And we've just got two sentences of text here. I'm going to copy this, go back to Clint, double click on my text box. and paste it in. Again, you want to be thinking about the style of this text. Once again, I'm going to use the Lato font. I'm going to change the size. Let's go for 14. Uh, and I'm going to center align it. Now with that text in there, I can make my text box bigger. I also want to make sure I click on proportional size, just like with my title. So once I've got my text on the screen, I've ticked proportional size. Once again, I want to go and alter my responsive settings. Once again, I don't want this element locked to any sides of the screen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to untick these boxes around the screen diagram. I'm going to set my center X to zero. And the center Y, once again, can be positioned exactly where I want it to be positioned. So I'm going to try minus, let's try minus 100 here. Okay, that looks good. So now I've got my title and my piece of text explaining what this menu is about. What I need to have on this screen is three buttons. Each of those buttons will take my viewer to a different video which introduces the three characters in my film. So for this, I could use the default buttons that come inside of Clint. So I've got my default buttons here. But instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import some images onto my screen to use as buttons. So let me go into my finder once again and find these images. OK, so I've got this Meet the Freegans folder here. And inside this folder, I've got three images. One image for each of my Freegan characters. So we've got Freegan Alf. Freegan Ash and Freegan Bob. So with each of these images, I've made them in Photoshop. I've taken a screenshot from one of my videos. I've cropped it into a circle shape and I've added a yellow border around it. OK, so let me grab those images and drag them directly into my sequence. And now we should be able to see in my timeline down the bottom, I've got three new layers, Freegan Bob, Freegan Ash, Freegan Alf. And all I need to do is drag these buttons around my canvas so they sit in the place where I want them to be. Again, with Clint, you have to line up your elements somewhat freehand, but we can use our responsive settings once again to make sure things do sit in a line. So that's the order I want them to display in. But now let's tidy the position up a little bit and make sure they look a bit neater. OK, so I'm going to click on my central image first. And again, I'm going to make sure it's proportional size. Again, I'm going to untick those locks to the size of the screen. And again, for this particular image, I'm going to set my center X to be 0. I'm going to make him go a little bit higher on the screen. So only a little bit. Let's just change that to 80. 
Okay, so now let's click on my left image. Let's do the same thing, proportional size, untick those locks. And again, let's make our center Y 90. And center X, um, I'm just gonna change that to 280. So that's minus 280. And now let's click on our right hand image. And once again, proportional size, untick those locks. I'm gonna set my center X here to be 280. So the one on the left was minus 280, this one is just 280. And then my center Y figure should be, I've forgotten what that should be, 80. Okay, so let's set center Y to 80. Great, so they're now positioned on the screen exactly where I want them to be. And let's just at this point do a save and then let's run our sequence just to see how it looks. Okay, so you should be able to see, we can see our background video. Like I said, I have taken that opacity down quite a bit, so it's quite dark to make our text and our buttons stand out, but you can still see it playing in the background. And if I change the width of my browser, you should be able to see that menu still looks good.